Hey guys. Well, I uh, left my hotel in um, Patong, and uh, now I'm over at Caron Beach, K-A-R-O-N. It's the next beach south of Patong, and um, kind of see it's a little bit quieter over here. Um, ooh, I can walk right out on the path there. So yeah, it's a little quieter here and a little more my speed. So. Um, I'm going to, uh, I booked one night at the, <laughs> at a hotel that looked okay online. It's usually what I do since I don't have any schedule and I got no place to be. And I travel light. I just got my one little backpack with a change of clothes in it. Um, it makes it easy to hop from one hotel to the next. So, uh, what I usually do, cause I'm, I'm generally, uh, critical, I, I, you know, I like to get a good deal. So, um, so even though the hotel may may not be expensive, I still expect the room to be clean and uh, there to be hot water, things like that. So um, so I'll stay the one night in this hotel and see how it is. They've got a decent workout room with a couple of things that I actually do. It's right across the street from the beach. So here's the beach. And uh, my hotel is literally right there, right there. And um, <coughs> yeah. So I can just get, uh, I can just walk across the street to the beach. Here, I'll flip it around. And there's the beach. Zoom out a bit. So uh, they said be careful swimming here because sometimes the currents um, can be strong. But uh, I usually just swim in the pool, although this is kind of nice. The water's pretty clean, looks all right. Um, some umbrella chairs down there that I could uh, rent. I'm sure and um, yeah so this is the beach it's about as about the same it looks about the same size same length as uh, as Patong Beach but it's less crowded it's a little narrower strip of sand and um, <coughs> and it's got these uh, mangrove looking uh, trees growing right up right up uh, on the beach there so this will be a little quieter. Um, every once in a while I like to uh, go somewhere where there's just a little bit of uh, activity at night. If, if I'm up in the evening, go out and walk around and get street food. And, and uh, you know, there's usually music and stuff playing and people are out and about. So it <coughs> makes it nice to get out and, and see things. But, um, but then I, I get kind of overwhelmed with uh, too many days um, of that so um, this will be a little bit quieter and I took uh, I was going to try to make a video I t I, I've been taking these uh, motorcycle taxis <coughs> it's the cheapest way to get around um, <laughs> and they have them on um, most street corners there'll be somebody sitting there with, with their scooter and offering to you know asking if you need a taxi and um but uh, i usually use the uh the grab app to get around <coughs> and um so you can just summon it and the nice thing about grab is you don't have to negotiate it so it's uh, probably the same price but um you can just uh summon it it's like uber and you summon it and they show up and you know exactly what you're going to pay. You don't have to, you know, go back and forth trying to get the guy to get it down to a normal price. And uh, I learned uh, on one of my trips when, where was I? I don't know. I was in, uh, it was a couple of years ago maybe. Um, I was, uh, t I, I took a taxi from the airport because I was still kind of learning how things work. And some of the countries you go to don't have Uber. Uh, so you got to figure out what service they do use, but I've kind of figured out in the countries that I've been to which app to use. And, um, and in the one instance, I, I was at an airport and needed to get into town. And um, so I just hopped in a taxi because I didn't know. I know where it was. It was Costa Rica. Yeah. So um, because the, you got like this uh, line of taxi drivers, it's like the front line on a football team you know you're trying to get through them and they're all grabbing at you and saying you need a taxi we take you where do you, where are you going where are you going and uh you know they sort of 
uh, you're trying to be polite, but uh, um, they're, they're very pushy about it. And then you realize, um, you know, you get in the taxi and they want, you know, $20 something to get you to take you five miles. And then uh, you figure out later you could have used Uber and gotten there for $2. So taxis are very inflated. Um, so I never take taxis anymore. Um, I got some nice restaurants over here. Um, yeah, so it's as you can see, it's uh, much quieter uh, than uh, Patong Beach. So anyway, yeah, so I never take taxis anymore. They're just everywhere in the world you go, there's still this contingent of taxi drivers. And, and my last, uh, the, the lady uh, on the scooter that took me here, um, <coughs> she texted me back and asked if I could meet her a little ways up the street because the uh, taxi mafia would give her a hard time. So, um, you know, they had that when Uber was first starting out, Uber and Lyft. They would go into a city like New York where people pay a million dollars to get a taxi medallion. And then uh, suddenly, you know, you can, uh, you can get an Uber for half the price of a taxi and and uh and it's just easier you click it on the app and they show up and it's faster it's easier and it, and it all runs through your payment app and uh <coughs> and um yeah it's just a it's just a better service um but it's one of those things where you you have these businesses that have been entrenched for so long and full of so much corruption and payoffs and and uh and it's bad for uh, the customer, and, and then uh, and then a company like Uber comes in, or Airbnb, or you know any of these booking sites that uh, um, that sort of broke the monopoly that that uh, the existing service had, and and it ends up being better for the consumer. Um, so I always try to support that, um, and. Uh, you know, it, it helps to keep the prices down. So I got here, uh, it's about eight kilometers, and um, it's about eight kilometers, and it cost me a hundred baht, and then I tipped a hundred. So it was about three dollars and fifty cents, I think, or for you know, let me see, it was a hundred baht for two fifty, so it's like five bucks. Um, <coughs> uh, two hundred baht is like five dollars uh, to to. Uh, Go. It was like eight and a half kilometers over, you know, over uh, these hills you see in the background, and um, so not a bad deal. And it would have been half price if you know if you didn't tip, but uh, but I always um, throw an extra tip on there because they're coming, uh, especially when they're bringing me uh, to a different town because she's not she's probably not going to get another booking uh, to take her back. But the scooters are. Uh, you know, sort of an efficient way to get around. Um, it basically, you just hop on the back like that and, and you go. And um, sometimes they have a helmet for you, sometimes they don't. And uh, I was going to try to make a video of it. I'll, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do that on, a, on the next trip. So, uh, the, um, but yeah, so it's, uh, it's cheap. I, on, my, on my last ride, when I was going to the zip line, the guy had to get gas while we were, you know, kind of halfway there and uh and so we were looking at the gas prices oh there's the big buddha that i was going to go see it's way up on top of the hill there i don't know if you can see it it's at the very top so i'll get a ride up there tomorrow maybe um <coughs> so uh we were getting gas and uh he was asking how much gas was in the united states and so I, you know, and they're on liters here, so I had to kind of estimate. I said, I think it's, I've been seeing online that it's like $6 a gallon or something in California, uh, which is, what is that, like three and a half liters, something like that. So it's, it's like two, close to $2 a liter, I guess. And, he, and I asked him how much it is here, and he says it was like eight, uh, I don't know. It ended. Up, it was something like 50 cents or something. It was like it was like 25, 75 percent less or something, um, and that's probably due to the uh, um, to the taxes and whatever gets added on. Um, so uh, yeah, so these scooters get probably 50 miles to the gallon, and they're only paying 50 cents a liter. Um, you know, so I think he put a couple of bucks in his 
in his tank to fill it up. And um, yeah, I think, well, he put a hundred baht in. So, uh, so about uh, two gallons and that'll take him like a hundred miles, I think, uh, on one of those scooters. So, um, <coughs> and then he, <coughs> they usually charge a hundred baht for any standard uh, distance. And um, so um, it's, it's almost 100% profit. So as long as, they, <coughs> as long as they're keeping busy and, and, they, and they get enough rides throughout the day, they make about $2.50 a ride, um, you know, which is uh, not too bad. The, the app does all the work. I throw on the, I throw on the extra 100 baht. So, he's, so my last driver made probably $5 on that, on that trip. Um, for 30 minutes, so 10 bucks an hour here goes a long way and what that math works out to so Yeah, anyway, that's the way to get around just on scooter you zip through traffic and and uh, If I had taken a car if I had luggage or or you know anything I would have had to take a car and it would have been 400 it would have been 350 to 400 baht so like ten dollars plus tip um, So it's less than less than half about a third uh, of the of the cost, so um, and it wasn't very far, so it was all right. But there's a taxi there. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is Caron Beach, Karen Beach. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but uh, K A R O N. And um, yeah, it's just a little more rural, uh, undeveloped here. So, um, so uh, and then I think there's more. Uh, more of a town down here around the corner. I was looking on the map and and there's sort of this uh, I don't know, a little waterway here, and then I think there's more of a more of a town down that way I don't think I'll walk the whole way but um, Yeah, so what do we got? Phuket Arcadia Karen Beach Resort Karen Beach Resort, so uh, if you're looking at a map, this is where we are. That's what it looks like. <coughs> and uh, so, yeah, if you're coming this way and and you're gonna stay, this is this is how it looks. And um, yeah, I wanted a place uh, that was like right on top of the beach, so I got I, I started at the uh, north end, but um, those rooms look a little larger probably more expensive too but um, I saw a place for like $17 a night but I it didn't look like it had as much of a swimming pool um, and maybe it maybe didn't have a weight room and I sort of wanted to be be able to work out but uh, but I'll stay the night and then I'll decide tomorrow if I want to stay another night in the same place or if I want to move to a different hotel um, Sometimes when you're out walking around, you see that there's a better place to stay and it's actually cheaper. So that's kind of the strategy there. So here we are. And they got the parasailing down there on the end of the beach. A couple of people looking to take off, it looks like. Yeah, maybe, um, yeah, so looking down the beach, um, this is basically just beach until you hit the hills there. Right on the other side of that hill down there is Patong Beach. So if you just go up and over uh, the hill, you're in you're in Patong. And then, but this one, if you go down farther that way, it looks like there's more of a rocky coastline out there. So maybe I'll go explore that direction tomorrow. So anyway, so this is Karen Beach and. Um, the next one south on the other side of those rocks is Kata Beach. So that'll that'll be my next destination when I'm done here. So that's it uh, from Karen Beach, uh, Phuket.